Hey guys, it's AK. We are, you know, we're coming back for something a little different than the norm. We are here to show you the mechanism. Yeah, I, I clearly can't speak today. The mechanism reactor. I'm just double checking to make sure it's fully stable. But we are here to show you guys how to set up a infinite fuel source for the mechanism reactor and using it as an infinite power source. I did this this particular side this way because it's the way I wanted it to be. So it's got this cute ultimate energy cube in here to hold the extra RF, and then it's got all the power lines coming out of it. So the reactor itself is sustaining all of this power, except for the lasers, because the lasers I didn't want to take the time to link up. I mean, I can. It's not a big deal. But these are taking in the water and producing the brine. There's two of them to sustain one of these small ones. And it's taking the brine and turning it into liquid lithium. Liquid lithium then goes out of this into a rotary condensator. And it's set for decondensating. It's taking liquid lithium and turning it into regular lithium. Which is then being piped into a solar neutron activator. Which has eight speed upgrades. And then that is coming out of it and into the gas tank for tritium. As you can see that thing looks like it's freaking out on the inside. That is because of this. If you click fuel, we have an injection rate of 98, which it won't let me go any higher than that. So, right now it is producing 9.16 million and rising, because it hasn't reached its full temp yet. At least I don't think it has. Yeah, no, that's still going up. The buffer is obviously full. And... So the way I set it up is I wanted Windows to see what was happening on the inside, even if it is a little freaky. So that pumps into the, the tritium pumps into the left side, and I use the, the matrix to determine what's the front. So that block right there. Then there is the deuterium coming in this side, running off of this block right here, which all of these pumps are getting it running. So. What you're going to need to get the deuterium running, you're going to need 4, 8, 12, 16, you're going to need 20 of the mechanism pumps set up over these pools. So I found it easiest to have these facing outward. And what we're going to do here in a minute is I'm going to do a little bit of a build over to the side so you guys can see, you know, how I set it up. So these have full stack of speed upgrades and one filter upgrade to get them to produce heavy water. All the heavy water goes into this little buffer here, which is like 112 buckets when it's full. Then it is being sucked out by an Ender I.O. cable straight into the electrolytic separator, which also has speed and energy upgrades. So it's then being crossed out into deuterium and oxygen. I'm obviously dumping the oxygen because at the moment I have no use for it. If you set up like an ore processing thing where you're going to need the oxygen, obviously, you know, pipe it out. You know, whatever works for you. So, oh, this isn't hooked up. Let's let's correct that real quick. So now this is connected to the power supply too. Obviously, it's still running at full capacity, so no big deal. I had this set up to off to the side just so I can make a little DT fuel for the uh, hollow ram, which I will get to here in a minute. So I have the cables running all the way over to here power the rotary condensator. Then I have them running underground because I didn't want it to be a huge mess. You can see them right there. They run all the way down here and then they pop out there for these water pumps that are meant for these thermal towers. And these ones are producing brine. Obviously plenty. And then if I go around. So I didn't, I didn't want to use solar constantly. Because solar has a drawback. It only works during the day. So I found out about this thing. This is a resistive heater. If you pump 200,000 RF into it, I mean, you don't have to do that. You can do it at a much lower level, and it would probably still do just about the same. I wanted the 200,000 RF because I did the math, and it takes 9.9 kK, or kilokelvin. Kilokelvin? One of those two. Anyways, it takes 9.9 .9 of this unit to keep all three of these running at the same time at full burn. 
So I set this up with 200,000 RF, so it's got a little more than it needs. And then I used something that I was unaware of before now. And it is Ultimate Thermodynamic Conductor. Or conductive? No, it's Conductor, I'm right. So you run these pipes over to a import for one of these things, like one of the valves, and then it pumps heat in. And the heat that's pumped in keeps it going. So I've got one going to this one, one going to that one, and then I have this pipe running all the way over here into this one. So all three of them are run off this. 200,000 RF, it's a lot of power. But this produces, I think, statistics. Once it's fully finished, its passive generation is going to be 9.8 million RF. So in the long game, not really a big deal. And if you take the time to make it water-cooled, you won't get nearly as much power, but you get 3.6 million millibuckets of steam a tick. So you could hook up a whole bunch of steam generators to compensate. So you could use this effectively to generate steam or, well, steam in a little power, or you could use it to just generate straight power and you'll get a good chunk of power out of it. And there's no saying that this is just like a one thing setup. I mean, you could probably feasibly set up more than one of these th these whole grids for your entire power grid. You could probably set up five or six. All you would need is like maybe a bottom floor for the blocks and buildings over here and then put these next to it and then run the pipes up to the reactor and then run the, the cables for power down to them to keep them powered and then repeat the process. Anything is possible honestly. I'm going to fix that time problem. I've seen people set up a lot of solar neutron activators. I just want you to know that that's not necessary. For one running at max speed, as long as you put eight speed upgrades in here, it can fully keep up. These aren't necessary either, these gas tanks. I put them there as a fail safe in case for whatever reason something over here stops producing. I have a buffer to get it back online. This one may not look like it's connected at all, but it is. It's clearly getting deuterium. It's just, it's a weird thing that's just accepting over open space. So, let's take this over let's take this over here oh, that's the wrong button oh, that's right, I set it so that I need a shovel so let's just grab a shovel real quick let's grab a shovel real quick and clean out some space And then at the end of the video, we'll take one last look at that reactor, and you can see for yourself, it will still be running. So I don't want you guys to think that uh, this is going to be a cheap option. I mean, it may be cheaper some, than some other mods, but also that all kind of depends on the mod pack itself. Or if you made your own mod pack, then you'll probably see the things, same thing I'm seeing right now, and it'll probably be a pretty high standard. Weather, clear, not clear weather. And that should make the snow go away. Oh, darn it. Just got rid of all this. You would think that the game would be nice to me. Nah. Anyways, it's okay, guys. This shouldn't take more than a second to re-get rid of. And that should be good enough. So where you're going to want to start is you're going to want to start by getting the subsidiaries for the reactor. You don't want to start with the reactor because the reactor, once it's complete, you have to build everything anyways. Hmm. If you have the plenty of power, 
before you start building this, and this will just be a step up, you could always build these, I'm going to come over here, these lasers first. One block in between them. I don't think you can put them closer, but one block in between them. Have them filter into a laser amplifier. You can have one laser amplifier, amplifier filter into the next laser amplifier. And then have it just aimed at that matrix right there, and it can start the reaction. So imagine each one of these as plus 8,000 going into the buffer. You can have as many as you want as far as I'm aware. It's just the more you put down, obviously, the more power it's going to take. So, I also wanted to show you something else about these lasers. They are not just used for that. You can use them for a lot of different things. Good example. Oh. That one went all the way down to bedrock. That one went all the way that way. And I have no idea if it stopped. But the point is, is these things do more than just, you know, your basic things. So don't, don't just aim them willy-nilly in your base. You'll take out chunks everywhere. So, um, actually I want to come over here and copy this. That. I want the bucket of water. I want that. I think that's all I'm going to need. Let's take these two safe. So, where are you going to want to start? Right? Everybody always wonders that. So, you're going to make four by four. And this, this will be the basis of everything. Okay, so like those, you're going to need a 4x4. Four four. So you're going to place all these down. I know it's not, like, guaranteed, but I like this because of a personal preference. I like the monitor to be right there, so I don't have to fly up to it. Because in some games, that's not going to be as easy. Now you see all that red particles? It means it built. So you'll see the temp going down. Obviously that's because it does not have the thing like the other one does where it's got, you know, heat bumping in. Obviously this one won't work at all because it's got no valves. So you're going to want an in valve, an out valve, and a temperature valve. That's what I call the temp the temperature valve is actually just a regular valve. So it don't look for something called a temperature valve because it doesn't exist. When I say temperature valve, I just mean a valve that uh, you put on there that you specifically mean to put heat into the unit. So you're also going to need a resistive heater, which they're nice. Since these are copies of the one over there, it's going to have like settings already. That was just one of the test settings. I can actually just plop that down. Oop, wait, no, that's on the right side. Plop, plop that down, and it'll fill it back up. And you'll see that it's got 300 and some odd K in it. It all kind of depends. So, we want this to be its maximum height. I don't know why a block went missing there. So... Just measure in there. That's still on. <gasps> Oops. <coughs> Let's take a second to correct that, because my wand went all wonky and made me place it on the wrong side. Luckily, creative mode gives you the advantage of being able to fix things pretty quickly. So that's still on, so let's go back up here and correctly place blocks this time. See, that was too far. You'll tell that that screen down there just went black. That's because you can only go so high with these things. And this is its max height. You can put wood blocks over the top to make sure that, like, if you're in a biome that snows, like I did over there, snow doesn't get it, because if you get snow in it, it does stop working. So, for the perpetual setup, you're going to need something a little more on the uh, particulate side. You're going to need two of these big ones. Now, you can set up bump in whichever way you want. I'm just going to set them up like so. That's valves. I need the blocks. So, 
Now you got that initial ring. You want to take this, go all the way around the edge. And there's nothing on this first ring. There's nothing prominent. You can do this ahead of time. You can just take those out. You can put down the valves you're going to need. And then you can go around the edge with the... I keep forgetting what these are called. Thermal evaporation blocks. And I want this on this side because I want to be able to access it, right? I don't want to have to crawl in this tiny space to be able to see the screen. And then... Let's make sure there's no snow in here. Nope. I cleared the weather, so it should be fine. Now let's make this one as tall as the other one. Good. Now we have the brine set up. After we finish with the brine set up, we want to set up the one that's not for brine. We want to set up the lithium setup. So let's just take this out. So the lithium setup, as you can see over there, doesn't need to be very big. It actually chews through pretty much anything that goes in it. So we want the heat to come in on this side and the input. And we want the output to come out on this side. And this is as big as you necessarily need your lithium production to be. That's it. It's pretty tiny. It's pretty straightforward. The reason that is is because it eats a lot of brine to produce lithium. It produces enough lithium by itself. It doesn't need extra sizing or anything like that. So we're going to have these two ports here be the output of brine. And we're going to have these sides be the input for water and heat. So let's go over here real quick. And grab this. And then let's grab this. So obviously we want these to stay hot, right? So we're going to put that there. There's two power inputs. Nice. I didn't notice that. Now those are hooked in. Now we need to go a little further. And then hook that into here. So now they're all going to get heat. Let's see if that's actually working. Yep, see it's going up. Now if we want to speed that process up, we can already just... Jump it straight up to 200,000 RF. That's going to spike up suddenly, and then this is going to start rapidly heating. As you can see, it's filling the buffer pretty darn quick. So, now that that's done... Let's take the mechanical pipes and start running them. Now these are just fluid pipes for mechanism. I use the ultimate version because it feels better to me and I like it. I like the mechanism vibe. I like the way that they've, they've built their stuff. So we're going to take a grass block. We're going to go over one. I believe all I needed was three setups. Oh, all I needed was two. Ignore that. <laughs> Ignore the fact that I apparently can't place grass blocks. All right, let's put that there. Put this here. Put this here. Put this here. And then... Place these. I'm a dinghy. Before you can place two of these, you have to put the water underneath them. 
that there, put that here, and vice versa. So they don't pick up the water. Like, if you put these over lava, they will eat the lava. All of it. And obviously, if you're in a biome that has snow, you might need to place torches to keep the ice from freezing over. Or to keep the ice from freezing over. To keep the water from freezing over into ice. Now that that's all placed, obviously you're going to want to connect cables rather than what I'm about to do. Because what I'm about to do is just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to take these creative energy cubes. Which automatically output a lot of energy. And it's really nice. These are running. Is all the water just getting pulled straight out? If it is, it's not going into that second one. It's not going into this first one either. Oh. I see where I made my, my mistake. The last one for me to copy was actually the heavy water ones. So let me copy the non-heavy water ones and correct my mistake. I'm not pleased with the fact that it keeps doing that. It doesn't usually switch to the snowiness all that quickly. Now that that's done, these are full of water. Put this all together. You'll notice that it's draining the pipes pretty quickly once I connect it to one. That's because these things, like, eat water a lot. So, now you'll see that these are full of brine. And the water is slowly filling up. So, the biggest ones can hold a lot of water. And I do not want, know why my stream keeps turning on. So, now that that's all done... Let's double check everything. Now let's give it a second to make sure that those fill up, and we'll be right back. And we're back. Okay, so these things fill out at about 4.6 million millibuckets. So, a lot of water. I believe they both fill at the same time. Uh, that happens occasionally, it's just a little glitch. So, how you fix that? You go up to the top. It happens when you use a builder's wand to place these. Nope. So if you go up, break one, put it back, it resets it, and it goes back to normal. No need to worry about it. So I'm not going for aesthetically pleasing, or I'd be burying these lines rather than leaving them out in the open. And run this all the way over to here. We're going to need to take these out because I forgot these things don't auto-eject. So if we could just place those, take off extract on, or extract on that one, take off insert on this one, always active. That's going to flood that line. Then we need to do always active, insert, turn insert off on this one, extract always active. Now that's going to pour all of these things brine straight into those lines. The brine is then going to come over here and get turned directly into liquid lithium, making that particular version of the setup complete. So then, we want to come over here. So obviously, this, this makes plenty of lithium. But as you'll see on the setup over here, lithium isn't what we need. We need tritium. So what we need is we need to copy this condensator, and we need to copy this solar neutron activator. So now when we come over here, we want to put down the condensator. It already has a little lithium and liquid lithium in it because I copied it. So for test purposes, let's not do that.
Uh, let's grab a fresh condensator. And we're going to place it here. Then we're going to grab two conduits. This one is going to be set to extract always. Oh, did not mean to do that. I'm going to click on this and we're going to click insert. Now you see nothing's happening, right? If we toggle the operation, nothing is still happening. That's fine. Let's give it power. So now it's full of power. Actually, I don't know why nothing's happening. That should cause something to happen. This should be getting fuel. One moment, guys. Okay, guys, I figured out what the issue was. So, I placed this backwards. <laughs> silly, silly AK. So, if we place that the other way around, toggle operation, now liquid lithium will pour in, and it will be making regular lithium. Obviously, that's not a very quick process, so we're going to need... Speed upgrades. Um, we need to grab a stack of mechanism ones, which I just tossed out on the ground because I'm a weirdo. And then it disappeared because I'm also a weirdo. So let's grab the upgrades again. Put them in my inventory. Let's throw them in here. Takes it a second. Gets a little faster with each one. And then you can see this steadily increasing in the amount of production it's gotten. Until it's producing a crazy amount. Now all the speed upgrades are in. We need a pressurized ultimate tube. Pressurized tube. So we want to put the pressurized tube here. And we want to put the neutron activator on top of it. And it will produce tritium. Then, obviously, you can pump it straight into a tank and then into the reactor or straight into the reactor. That's up to you. But this completes the tritium version of the setup. Now we need to do the deuterium version. So we're going to come quickly over here. Grab this. I'm not going to grab that. So, this is a really simple setup. It's just water, basically. So, and we're going to be showing this as a more compact version. So I'm going to get rid of some of the snow. So, over there, we needed one, two, three, four, five setups for it to be stable. Two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to want to place the water in these. Place this. Place this. Now, obviously, I'm not going to take the time to wire all this up. You know, that's something that everybody can figure out on their own time. Wiring is really up to each person and their preference, so whether they want the lines buried or whether they want the lines visible. Some people like them visible, some people like them buried. You know, it's up to each person. So now that those are placed, we want to place these. on this side. Then switch sides and place the mechanical ones. Now obviously, now that all these are placed, you shouldn't have to worry about the water turning dice. At least I don't think. Grab us some mechanical pipes. So I place them in bunches of four. And then I just connect them with one tube. Should be more than sufficient. So once these are all placed. Now you've got your heavy water setup. The heavy water setup is used to make the deuterium. 
if I'm over explaining it, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to over explain. I'm trying to make sure that I get just enough explaining in so that you guys uh, have a pretty good idea of how I did all this. So let's get a tank. Again, this is a preference thing that I'm about to do, not a requirement thing, of course. Where is my ultimate fluid tank? There we go. I probably was staring right at it. Put this down. It's going to pretty, pretty fairly instantly fill that up because these are all running at max speed. These lines will always look like they're depleted and these will always say empty. And that's just because of the fact that they don't have anywhere for it to go. Right. So let's put an ender conduit there. Now we need a separator. An electrolytic separator, to be exact. So let's put this down. Now it'll say it's getting nothing. Which it isn't getting anything, because this isn't extracting yet. So let's turn that on. You'll hear that kick on. I'm not a big fan of that sound itself. So you'll get deuterium and oxygen. You'll get less oxygen than deuterium. But you have a choice. You can use the oxygen, or you can just do what I do either dump excess or just dump all and it'll just empty all of that out and you won't have it so the deuterium setup works really well but we need to give it a little boost so let's grab eight of these put them in this slot now you'll notice a definite pickup in speed once they are all installed Now it's full. So let's take an ultimate gas tank here. Put it here. Obviously this thing's going to start pulling it all in, which is going to drain this. And then you'll see that this cell has plenty of heavy water in it. You're like, why is it not going in here? Easy. This has an extraction limit that you need to get past. So take a speed up grade and then it only takes 15 then just take that out now this will stay full this should stay fairly full and it will start separating and then this tank will start to rapidly fill as you can see it is filling pretty quick and I don't know about overall but I think this setup is efficient enough to run maybe maybe two reactors off deuterium but I'm starting to doubt it because this is running out so this will have a limitation but you shouldn't be burning it this fast while the reactor is running so this might just be good for one setup it looks like it might have been good for more you could probably do this a little differently instead of having 20 of these you could probably have 32 just make it a bit bigger and run this setup off of 32 but for the overall purposes that filled up that immediately filled up and then it starts refilling the heavy water. It's hard to say exactly how much heavy water you're producing. I can see if these will tell me. It doesn't seem to want to tell me. I know they have a production limit, but I do not know what the production limit is. That'll have to be something I, uh, I put in the description later if I can find it. But this is essentially it. So you have your deuterium, you have your tritium, and then all you need is to put your reactor down, put the lasers down, power the lasers up, oh, and create a hologram. Why don't I show you guys how to do that real quick? So... I always find it through RAM because of the fact that it doesn't work like that. Nope, okay. We'll just search through mechanism then. Ah, oh, it's because I always spell it wrong. H-O-H. -H. So, let's put that back. This is how you create holograms. 10 carbon, which is just like a piece of coal, and 4 gold powder in a metallurgic infuser metallurgic basic infusing factory, an advanced infusing factory, or an elite infusing factory. 
and it will make these hollow ramps. As you can tell, they're empty. You need to store DT fuel for them to work. So the machine that you see I have here, this infuser, you need to put one bit of tritium, or like take one of your tanks before you start reactor, those tanks that you had stored here, and put one in here and one in here and then take them right back out. It'll fill both of these and it'll make DT fuel. Then you put the hollow ram, like I'm gonna show you now, right there. And it will fill the hollow ram up. Then you take the full hollow ram up to this controller here. And then you place it in here. And it starts the reaction. Well, it doesn't start the reaction. The laser starts the reaction. It's just ready for a reaction. But why don't I show you how to build this? Let's come over here and get what we need. That should be everything. So when you go to build this, you're going to need a good, good amount of space. So cut out all these. So now you're going to want to set up a 3x3 three three and then put one of these little prongs in every direction. Okay? So one little prong, and then a three by three. And this holds true pretty much in every way you build it. You can choose to have windows if you want to see what's inside it, like mine does, or you can choose to not have the windows. That's you know completely up to preference. So you can build it without windows, I believe. You just need the crystal matrix. that there, put that there, put that in here, and there. And then you want to fill in this middle bit here. And I will show you why this particular version isn't going to work, and that's because I haven't put anything into it. See, it didn't form. So if you take out that and you put this in, it's still not going to form because it knows it's missing things. Like, let's say, since, let's let's just say we're going to start it from this side. So if you put that in, not good enough. You can put all this stuff in it. Still not good enough because it knows it's missing things. Like, for, for a good example, that. So it's smart enough to know when it doesn't have what it needs. So let's say you want this to be your power side. I like to have four, just so you have extra ports so you can draw out power. Then you're going to need one on either side, minimum, to input the fuel. Now, you could be like me. You could take out these blocks and put in windows. That's what I like because I like to be able to see what's going on inside the reactor. And you can do that on pretty much every side. You could take that out, put a glass window there, take these out, put glass windows there. But these aren't glass windows. These are reactor glass. So keep that in mind. It's just not not just regular glass, it is an actual mod glass. It's just one piece of glass surrounded by reactor frames. So now that that's all built, all you need is the lasers as shown here. And then you need to let them charge. This needs to reach, I would say, about half charge before you fire it. You can do it with less, it just takes a lot more preparation and a lot more other involved, you know, stuff. So I do it the way I do it because I find that that's the most efficient way to get it done. So once this is all set up, these are your four power outlets. You know, use them how you need to. And then the two on either side, the one you can see through the window and the one on this side are for deuterium and tritium. Doesn't have to be a particular side. It can accept it from either side. Once it's formed, you'll notice that this is lit up. If you break it, it goes away. So now that it's lit up, you can go into it. Hollerim will go there. This will tell you how much heat you have. So when these are red, this will fill up with energy. These are for steam, so I'm not going to be making a build for steam right now. So you're not going to be able to see these in use. The statistics. Looks like nothing. But 
tells you what the minimum injection rate is, the ignition temp required, max plasma temp, max casing temp, and then it'll tell you how much it's going to passively generate. Now that will alter as you go. So the more the injection rate, this will change. It will tell you what the max temperatures are going to be. It'll tell you what the generation is going to be. It'll tell you what the ignition temp would have been. And it will tell you what the injection rate is. So if you go to fuel, it'll say the injection rate of zero. Say we put it to an injection rate of 99, which will obviously correct to 98 because that's the highest it goes. You can come back in here and it'll tell you the max temperatures. The ignition temperature stays the same. It'll tell you what the minimum injection rate of, is of 2, but it'll tell you the new passive generation at 9.8 million RF. You can do the water-cooled one. You will only produce 2.45 million RF for a maxed out one, but you will get a lot of steam, which you can then use for other machines. So if you're looking to make steam power and you're looking for a powerful steam generator that also gives you a little bit of juice on the side, this is a good way to go. Well, that's it, guys. This is my build of a mechanism reactor for perpetual power. And if... Actually, I know I forgot every time, so I will come back over here for one last time and tell you that this... This is the resistive heater from mechanism. It is the way you can get around using solar power for your mechanism reactor. All right, guys. That's all. This is AK, and I'm signing off. I'll see you guys next time.